Welcome to part 2 of our conversation on Platonism, chess and copyright. For part 1, check the card on the top right or find a link in the description. In this video, we shall continue our discussion about copyright and chess and its link to philosophy and Platonism. Also, Grandmaster Van Forest will share his thoughts on chess style, chess engines and the actual practice of chess at top level. I hope you enjoy it! Um, actually, recently there was this case, um, a couple years ago uh, only, and if we are fast forwarding from uh, 1921 or whatever to mm -hmm. uh, 2021 or, so, or something like that, mm -hmm. um, there was a company, it was called World Chess, they were hosting a yes. tournament. Yes, yes. Uh, and they, uh, 2016 maybe. Yeah, the Carlsen Karyak in match. Yeah. They sued Chess 24. Right, they won it. Yeah. In, I'm not sure about the exact story, so don't quote me on this, but they won it. They, moves of their tournament copyrighted so in the chess world you have a lot of um, companies which broadcast the moves of chess tournaments mm -hmm. but this these organizers wanted to be the only ones being able to transmit the moves they kind of wanted to copyright the moves actually but finally a, um, a judge ruled them um, uh, you know incorrect and uh, yeah. allowed other companies to transmit the moves but it's a little bit different but in a way it's also similar like um, once again, showing that you cannot copyright the moves. Yes, so it's yeah, very similar. It's not uh, that different. So, a lot of streamers, uh, chess streamers, uh, when they are broadcasting live tournaments, they access chess.com or chess24. And then they, the board will be chess24s, but they will provide their own commentary. They are still allowed to do that. Yeah. So, mm -hmm. that, that is, the, that is the, what that ruling addressed. So, you, you cannot prevent access to the board. Why would you do that? Right, of course you cannot. No. <laughs> yes. So you can't uh, monopolize that aspect as well because it is more like uh, the moves themselves. You cannot claim ownership to that. Mm -hmm. You can claim ownership to your stream. For example, your broadcast. I cannot run uh, chess.com's uh, chess broadcast on my channel and uh, claim uh, money for it and monetize it. Mm -hmm. That is protected. But I can still go on to chess.com and access their uh, board. And then give my own commentary. Yeah, and that's fully allowed. Yeah, that's so allowed. So I, I read that um, sentence, it's not a sentence, but the, the statement of uh, the court um, b before recording this, just to see whatever whether I found anything interesting. Yeah. <laughs> I found like, three things, but mainly that um, chess moves are not protected by United, United States copyright law. Okay. This is because, like sports, uh, scores and statistics, the moves that a player makes on a chessboard during a match are not creative works of authorship. Yeah, so, that's what I would say. Yes. So later it refers to, uh, uh, it is a fact. Yeah. Like for instance, uh, Van Forest sacrificed his bishop on h7. Yeah, it is that's something fact, yeah. that happened. Yeah. And that's how the law... No, I think uh, it's more like it. this. For example, you know, pi, 3.14. Okay. Mm -hmm. and, and more. Please. Okay. <laughs> I know. 1529265358979. We will. You know a lot more than me. We, we will code. 8864. Yeah, I lost. Let's okay. keep going. I'll come on, put come on, pi on top and then let's see. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Jordan good, and right? pi. It was recent, recently, it was pi day. Like, uh, yeah, uh, yeah. The or 14th. it's coming up. It's coming up. 14th Sorry, of March. Yeah, that's I don't know. Well, I, I don't think I will have this for the, by the 14th of March uh, edited. But if I do, maybe for Pi Day. Yes. Uh, I religiously observe uh, Pi Day. It's, a, it's an important uh, date for, in my heart. Yes, I'm going to have some good pie. Oh, <laughs> yeah, well, actually, yes. The, that does. The, yeah. you, the pie what better way to celebrate Pi Day? Yes. Yep. <laughs> anyway, so what about yes, the number Pi? Coming back. Yeah. <laughs> so, so the number Pi, it is endless. Yes. And it does not repeat. Right. So, mm -hmm. in there somewhere, there is a sequence of literally everything, every number there is. If you convert the number into words, every yeah. word there is, every sentence, every book there is, somewhere it's there. Right. So, it's ki I thought it was kind of similar to chess because there are insane amount of variations. There are billions and billions. Yes. And the fact that someone found a sequence in Pi that says, okay, yeah, there's a sentence called, my name is Ishwar in Pi. Inside right. of Pi, it well. How can I copyright that? Can I? Co wow. Well, well, I did an insane amount. Yeah, I did yeah. an insane amount of work into yeah. going and analyzing and 
researching on this uh huh but it's still yeah. it's, we all know it's there exactly so i thought well i don't know if it's true but i thought it was kind of similar to chess games because any move is yeah, also it is there probability yeah. after five moves there are like uh, i think billions of uh, ways mm. in which the game can be progressed yeah right well the, the yeah the actual number of possible i don't know but of course it's finite but it's really big yeah, yeah. I mean, if, if greater than the amount of atoms in the universe yeah. after it goes to infinity but it's not quite at infinity no. almost i guess there is i think there should be an end because the yeah well, the actually in, the interesting part is like there's of course an infinite amount of possibilities but the practical game of chess it's actually quite limited in a way because they're like why they tell us uh, tell, tell 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 the crowd then they like, yeah well basically 99.9999 etc of the positions just never occur like in um, top chess, chess is being is a logical game you know there's a reason every move is is the best move and naturally um, most chess games naturally progress according to more or less the same lines whereas most of the chess positions you can set up any random number of pieces on any random number of squares within the 64 squares available but they are not logical positions they are not likely to be achieved in fact they're extremely extremely unlikely yeah so um well this is also what makes good chess players is just their pattern recognition because um a lot of the things we see we have seen before um because they this the same things happen over and over again at least in a logical game of chess between two people trying to play normal game of chess yeah the berlin mm -hmm. Yeah, the Berlin, <laughs> the dreaded Berlin defense. <laughs> dreaded, dreaded. <laughs> no, but uh, in, in, but it makes sense that uh, okay. For instance, uh, in this I remember this court statement. Uh, they were also referring to preparation. You can you can claim that, but this is my prep. You know, my, yes, my preparation. Yes, we do all the time. Yeah, uh, I mean, back in the day, remember Kasparov before you know when chess base was starting be to become a thing. Mm -hmm. Right, and Kasparov would keep uh, his um, preparation like completely in secret in you know, the hard drives and yeah. whatever, yeah. and not share that with anyone because this is mine. Um, <laughs> but uh, well, indeed, he was the first, you know, to spot some in uh, innovations. He was doing that constantly for many years, which made a huge difference, let's say, in the nineties and the two thousands. But the um, but then this court says like not even preparation counts as a creative um, endeavor, let's say, because preparation does not uh, force, let's say, an outcome. Does not force anything. Like You can have a top yeah. preparation and still lose. Oh, that's very interesting because... Um, you cannot copyright novelties either. Yes. So, but because the purpose of copyright is to... Well, what would you achieve by copywriting a novelty? So people um, have been contractu contractually obliged not to share for example information they um but let's say you work for someone right i, I get you know, seconds yes yeah. yes and seconds find, are the analysts of like a team you of find you find people. some amazing opening novelty um and then contractually they're not obliged to share this with anyone else or play it themselves because it's work done for you know um the player you're seconding uh, right. basically the, the player you're training for so that's interesting as well whether that will be legally allowed or whether you can just say well that's all great what you're saying but um, you know my opening ideas are not copyrighted um, they're there for anyone to find I can just share them yeah so yeah so people nowadays um, they're more generous I, I read an article I think it was uh, where I got this uh, Kasparov anecdote and they were comparing it to Anish Gili, I think. Right. He was like, no, I share my prep with everyone. Like he, yes. he has like this sort of, well, you know him personally, so <laughs> <laughs> obviously, but, uh, but yeah, they're putting Kasparov in, in that time. Yeah. Yes. Uh, and then Giri on the other extreme, like, no, just share yeah. it, like make some saw, courses. Or yeah, I saw a video where he explains why he does that because he, t I, th I don't know if it's right, but he says that it is only when I've exhausted all of my resources that I will actually go back and start working again. So if I have something, something by the back of my head saying that, okay, I still have this line prepared, mm -hmm. I won't be motivated to work to my fullest potential. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. I thought that, that was interesting, interesting and that was really cool. He once told me that he has so many ideas, but he anyway only remembers <laughs> one or two of them. So <laughs> he says there are many people with way less ideas, but at least they remember more of them. Kind of ideas how to play. 
so it's yeah. interesting as well. I mean, he's done fairly well anyway. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Nice work. I don't think he can complain, but yes. um, so yeah. So the last point I would like to touch is also a question Ishwar uh, gave me. Um, so how would you d understand when in chess you talk about a player's style? So this would be another what is X question, although uh, I will not be very platonic with this one because it's um, it's a more slippery concept, you know, it's like right. harder to grasp. But in chess, we talk about style. Yes, yes. So, um, I've thought a lot about this, about about style. For example, even trying to understand my own style to mm. become a better player. And then at some point, I even wondered, is there even such a thing as style? Um, and I found it really hard to to say because I don't know myself, my own style. I don't. People always say I I play in this way, but I'm not sure I relate to that. So um, it's 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 interesting. <laughs> um, I definitely like to think about style because let's say you're preparing for someone, you try to you know put them into boxes kind of to okay this is their weakness, this is their strong point. I'm mm -hmm. gonna prepare like play like this, but um, I I do. I do believe um, people have maybe very slight um, preferences in how to approach the game. For example, you have option A and option B. Um, they're both equivalent. That happens all the time. But one is going to be sharper and the other one is going to be um, maybe more risk-free. Like you have tons of such moments. Even when you're preparing for a game, you can choose such. And then some people will have the natural preference to go for the sharper, more riskier one. But um, of course, also a good option, and others will try to limit the risk, but also re maybe retain a small but stable advantage. So this is maybe kind of a style thing, but mm. um, it's really it's really hard to see, um, especially when you're yeah playing your when own game you. of chess. <laughs> yeah, and yeah. I'm also curious. So I, I do you how how do I put this? So do you assess the criterion of style when you are choosing an engine that you are working with? Yes, for sure. Well, at least I used to. I think by now the engines have really become very good, but there used to be like huge stylistic differences um, when back when the computer engines had um, most notably serious um, strategical weaknesses. So that really you could see as a uh, you know as a style thing. They would only be able to calculate brute force, but the simplest positional concepts uh, they wouldn't understand you can also ask that well what is this positional concept it's not easy to define yeah or what is the difference between a strategic or uh also for the programmers right like yes, okay we, we so have this idea really how do i put this idea like it's they have to understand chess yeah. programming and yeah. oh my god and well now you have basically two main engines you have stockfish mm -hmm. you have lila zero uh, artificial artificial engine which basically they're playing chess um by playing billions or millions of games against itself and therefore really gained a amazing feeling for the game but also it calculates pretty well so it really is just like a superhuman mm -hmm. and then you still have stockfish which used to be basically brute force but now they even incorporated a artificial neural network into that engine so it's also got a bit of both um but they're still slightly slightly different stockfish calculates more lila plays more based on feeling whatever that is yeah yeah it's not I mean, easy you to can tell by as well. when you look at the games like, yeah yeah like beauty appeared again when alpha zero and lila zero yes yes started I, playing if, chess yeah. they, they i like to see lila more as a superhuman kind of player while stockfish is more like yeah i don't know like like a god or something like i don't i don't understand it's all the time. There's like, no intuition. Yeah, There's like just... Lila, I can relate to kind of like I. Okay, that that is really deep, sophisticated play, but I can understand where Stockfish is just like hundred moves <laughs> deep calculation. Like, yeah. I don't understand it. Then uh, yeah. why? Yeah. Yes. <laughs> yes. Yeah, so I think like nowadays at the top level, the different engines give different evaluations for different positions. Yes. For, uh, for the same position. Sorry. So you could take one uh, and uh, one position, and like different engines will give their own evaluation. Mm -hmm. So they evaluate the position differently, yeah. the way in which they are trained to do. Yeah, for sure. Um, well, also evaluation is um, um, it's it's an interesting thing because, for example, the Lila evaluation. Um, um, or in, basically, we usually look at evaluation in centipons, at least humans. So you have the equal value is zero. Um, if someone is better, much better, it's going to be plus one, minus one, 
if black is much better, but actually these values are translated, I believe, from other values just to make it easier for us humans to understand. For example, right. Lila works in some wind draw loss kind of thing. I'm not sure on the details here. I'm, yeah, not, yeah. I'm not a programmer, but... Uh, but you yeah. use this uh, anyway. So yes, you yes. have access to them and, and you use them on a sort yes. of regular basis. Yes, yes, yes. Um, and I look at the Centipon evaluation just because that's what I'm used to, but I'm aware that it's a translated value that um, may not, you know, use some kind of complicated mathematical formula to get to this um, values. Um, so I, I always take these evaluations with a grain of salt because basically these engines are just playing to play the best move. They're not caring that much, I think, whether it's 0 080, 0 050. This is just for human convenience in a way, I think. But maybe I'm wrong about this. Mm. I think partly you are right, mm -hmm. but what uh, in a way i approach this is for example like a lot of these uh, first they were brute force engines mm -hmm. and like compare them with alpha zero mm -hmm. alpha they literally made alpha zero play against it mm -hmm. for like four hours straight after mm -hmm. teaching it the rules yes they did not feed any pre-existing game into it like right. the normal uh, the standard way, way of uh, creating an engine they feed it they feed it millions of games that already yes. exist so i think the way in which it was trained there was actually a difference into how it evaluates a position and its style of play. Mm -hmm. It's clearly, uh, it's very different, yes, from normal. Mm -hmm. But yeah. it has a particular style of playing. And could you use that in your actual game? Was uh, That was I, I was wondering because... You, yeah, you, I think you, we you, learned you, a lot of lessons. Uh, you from, use the style, you mean? Yeah, this, it, uh, can the, you program a chess yeah, engine to use a particular style against a particular opponent? Um, well, at least Lila, we can kind of relate to like we learned some lessons but it's um it's not easy but we learned i think we would learn more about specific types of positions which occur more often that kind of changed our perspective on how they were judged before versus how they're seen see now there's a lot of positions which people thought they were bad they're good now at vice versa um and also the way they play how they maybe um play in certain situations um, definitely we, we learn from but it's really hard to incorporate in our play I would say yeah so, mm -hmm. um, but yeah the style question is really an in interesting yeah um, because like I thought like I, w I suspected that uh, chess.com came up with all of these engines like these bots uh, uh, like, with different styles yeah you know? like so mittens. I, I was wondering <laughs> how did they actually make these so oh. I thought that they just fed all of the games I would think that that's some kind of um, very um, basic programming. I, I don't. Did I mean, they just fed all of, uh, for example, uh, uh, Vishy Anand's bot? Yes. They fed only that games, only games played by Vishy, so, to, so that the bot may actually gain his style. Right, no, what I think they basically do, they have maybe one chess engine, they can set it at a certain rating level, yeah. um, they feed it all of Vishy Anand's games for as an opening book, make it play something out of those opening and then it just plays like an engine basically mm. there's really no um, deep or sophisticated thought behind that um, right the actual chess engines like Sockfish and Lina they work in very complicated mm. uh, ways mm. but uh, yeah. yeah cool so I just have one more thing but it's just like something I want to mention let's say uh, rather than that because when we were discussing about the existence of these um, chess games do we make them do we discover them we have not reached and I, it was not my goal either but we have not reached uh, like a conclusion of yes. what this is, right? And this is sort of what happens also in Plato's dialogues that uh, people get, you know, tired of Socrates and then they say, okay, I have to go, bye. You know, <laughs> like, and, and it's, you know, that's called an aporia in, in Greek. Aporia. Uh, like um, you are um, left like without an, an exit, without a resource uh, for, like and in it, this case, yeah. without a conclusion, right? Inception's ending. Yeah, yeah, because uh, the, the point of the exercise is to have the exercise not necessarily to reach the answer. So um, when this, okay, are we making, are we co-making this chess game? Are we discovering it? Uh, it reminds me of another platonic idea, which yeah. I, I'm, I'm more skeptical personally of this one, but uh, in the in sense of how to argue for it, like in its favor. But some uh, platonistic, let's say, philosophers have claimed that there is a realm of meaning. So for instance, um, imagine a world of meaning, right? 
and we, well, you're Dutch, I, my native language is Spanish, so um, we could express things like dog, as I was using that example. How's, what, what's dog in, in Dutch? Hund. Hund, okay. So, perro in Spanish, and we're referring to the same thing, right? Yes. But, uh, so therefore, our, both our languages target, let's say, the same thing in this realm yes. of meaning. But uh, there's this concept that I, uh, you told me earlier, I misspelled. Geselligheid uh, <laughs> uh, yeah. in, in Dutch. The pronunciation is good though, so. Excellent. I, I, I practice all that. No, just. <laughs> you know, like yeah. seven languages. So. <laughs> that it's a professional skill that we need in, in, in the field. Yeah, so. well, there's definitely words in every language which, um, like Geselligheid in Dutch, it's hard to exactly say what it points in the other languages. I, I don't say. know Dutch, explain it to me. The gezelligheid, the word, yeah. Um, well, basically, it basically means having a good time with other people, kind of. Uh, but I wouldn't know the literal translation in, into into English, and I think every language has. But it's like a particular mood or like a state uh, of being. Yes, yeah. yes, it's um, it's a joyful, joyful yeah. mood kind of thing. But, but not like gezelligheid. Crazy. You kind of. Um, you say it when you're having a good time, usually with other people, um, and you're all kind of happy. You're not out of, you know, going crazy, but it's yeah. just, you know, happy, yeah. Gezelligheid. Yeah. Gezelligheid. Gezelligheid. Yeah, but like, that's a concept, but I, I, correct me if I'm wrong, but you also say when something is like cool or something is working, ah, gezellig. Like. Yeah, yeah, we also have another word called lekker. Lekker, <laughs> like, like lekker ding, I know. That. Ah. <laughs> Yeah, 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 and it, you can say it any any time. But um, gezellig, yeah, I think if you would put it into Google Translate, it would say something like cozy, maybe. Right. I'm not sure, but um, gezellig. Yeah, it points to various kind of things. Actually. Yeah. Yeah. So you can use it in in different contexts. Yeah. But but say. again, the, the fact that you're having this difficulty is yes. is it, it might, was my whole point because right. I can think of all the words. Uh, one that I like in Spanish, ajeno. Yeah. Ajeno. ajeno. Uh, for instance, ajeno literally means something that belongs to other person. Okay. So many, you ajeno. know, dramatic Spanish uh, Spanish songs are like una mujer ajena. They would say like so a woman, but from someone else. Ah. So you're like, mm -hmm. <laughs> and you feel tempted. Yeah. Many infinite songs with this, uh, but you don't have that word in English certainly. Mm -hmm. I don't know in other languages. I'm sure you have I words like that in English as well. Um, um, yeah, yeah. Uh, I, there's one that I know it doesn't exist in Spanish. Accountability, <laughs> oh. <laughs> which is very funny culturally. <laughs> we we don't even have the word like <laughs> yeah Spanish <laughs> accountability. Is it not the same thing kind of as responsibility or accountability and responsibilities? You can be responsible for something. Um, what is the difference? But I think accountability. Accountability mm. like. You are taking responsibility for the consequence as well, I guess. Yes. Okay. Yes. It's more we, 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 the ah, consequence. If you're yes, the responsible, yes, you yes. cost it in a way. But in, in accountability, you give me your opinion, you not only cost it, but you are responsible about the outcome. Yes. And uh, you need to respond to this. You need to be accountable. You know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, you don't say you need to be responsible. No, you They're need like, to be no. accountable. You actually have to um, owe up to uh, whatever. Yeah. You did. Yes. So in this realm of meaning, in a way, um, the parallel with chess that I wanted to draw was that you have a world with all the possible chess games that can be played. And whether you played it on a board, in, of any kind of board, or in your mind with a blindfold chess with someone else, or just in your mind uh, yourself, you're accessing this realm of um, possible chess games and you just express it in different ways, be it in a a uh, train of thought in your mind, or on a piece of paper when you annotate it only, or when you speak and uh, play the blindfold game just speaking yeah. with someone else, or the actual chess game recorded, connected the board to the internet and broadcast anyway. So um, it's like the different languages in a way, that they it all is. access the it same is. object from different right, so uh, sides. It's like Right, that does make sense. So it's like all <laughs> all roads lead to Rome, and Rome is that chess game. There yeah. are a lot of ways of accessing it. You can yeah. play by blindfold. Uh -huh. You can play on the board. Yeah, yeah. I, I will not give support to this idea, and a lot, at least not in this video. If you like it, put it in the comments, and I, I can make an effort and try to justify it. But uh, in my you know platonistic intuitions, this realm of um, the, with the whole possibilities of of the game in this case, or language expression, mm -hmm. the realm of meaning. 
makes a lot of sense to account for the experience in a way. Um, because in order to call, co-make or co-create something in the case of chess, you, you, it's not that you're making a coordinated effort with your opponent. Like, rather, no. You're trying to keep that part hidden you know, from, from the other guy in yeah. front of you. And yeah. also, like, if you copyright a game of chess, for example, if you copyright a novelty, what have you basically achieved by doing so? Yeah. Well, you could say that uh, I want a copyright because I want my yeah, name yours. associated yeah. with yeah. that game. But you already have that. Fisher's Pass Key Game not, 11, no not, one's going to say. Not always. There's tons of, of cases where, like, um, some player finds novelty, but another player gets to play it first. Then the credit goes to the other person who played it first, doesn't it? Yes, So, but anyway... So if you, let's say you find a novelty on your laptop, somehow, had, oh, then you go out into the world, you make a huge post on the internet or whatever, and you're like, this is my novelty, nobody can play it. Then you're sure that nobody else yeah. will be able to. Yeah. I mean, wh why do you copyright things? To say, like, you cannot use this without my permission. Uh, yes. Or profit from it. At least. Yes, that without, is what, without... and the main aspect of it. But then the blog post, if it's a blog, let's say. Yeah. That could be copyrighted, but not the move. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. What? I can't play this move ever again in the future? <laughs> <laughs> no, he put a blog post and now I cannot do it. Like, we'll play it anyway. Yeah. You know? yeah. <laughs> Watch so the me. Thing, the thing about novelties, if you really want your name associated with it without copywriting it, which is, of course, impossible, is just hoping that you get to play it first. And uh, yeah. truth be told, uh, more often than not, uh, other people play it before you. Yeah. And then the credit goes to them. So it's a bit of a... Uh, who gets their quickest uh, or fastest way, and it's uh, yeah. usually not all your own influence. It depends yeah. on the opponent. And it's, I think also to, to bear the name of the move, it's not only... I mean, even if you don't play it first, you need to play it in a more... Um, how do you say? Uh, it generating an impact. Yeah. Like, mm -hmm. I don't know, uh, last time we saw each other, I remember this, uh, one of the Blitz games, it was... Right. Ah, uh, oh, yes, uh, this reminds me of Kramnik, uh, Aronian Kramnik in uh -huh. the Candidates 2018 with his Rook G8 ah. idea in the opening. It was like, I hope I can edit and put the game so people can understand what I'm yeah. saying. To. He played Rook G8, maybe it was not a novelty, because he said he found it, it many a years concept, ago. concept, maybe. Kind but of. it was new to the field and he crushed Aronian with... With that, and because of that outcome, let's say, okay, in my heart at least, like, no, this is yeah. the Kramnik Ruggie, like, and, and I'm afraid. Yeah, now. you, you, <laughs> you quicker will relate it as well to, you know, a big name like Kramnik. For example, yeah. I have some friends, and they claimed they played an idea first, and then maybe two weeks later, Kramnik, Anand, Carlson played the same idea. Of course, their name will be associated with the idea, and not yeah. of my uh, random uh, amateur friend, let's say. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. So we uh, amateurs there's, have There's no also time. a difference between an actual novelty, an actual uh, novel idea, maybe. Um, all these kind of things are different. So, yeah. Well, guys, thank you very much for coming to this conversation. Um, yeah. How do you feel, guys, after after this? Like, it was uh, good. I, I somehow feel very uh, relaxed. So maybe the uh, that's the best prize. Okay? Philosopher in me, uh, you know. <laughs> I yeah. will start thinking more now, more clearly. He's really? pulling out your inner Plato. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I'm not feel? gonna go around town now uh, being so grotesque though. Don't the guy, the guy got killed for that? He got so killed. Yeah, yeah. Don't he got killed, executed. Like it was the the whole town, let's say, like the whole city. <laughs> like, no, we execute this guy. Right. So um, well, that's what happens when you go around asking every people. Well, who are you? Yeah, and, and he also yes. made a a part, very particular kind of defense. He, instead of apologizing, which was the, the main thing everyone did, he said, like, no, no, you know, you know, the state should pay me a stipend because of my contribution to um, the... Okay, we execute you. Like, <laughs> that's yeah. it. Be but gone with you. How do you feel, Ishwad? Yeah, you? it was fun. And, yeah, this is more a conversation rather than an interview. So, that it was, was the, really good. That was the whole point of it. So, okay, we're going to say thank you to the people in Thanks. front of us. I, I think we, we've been laying back progressively. <laughs> <laughs> We well, forgot we're on camera, yeah? Yeah. yeah. Well, okay. thank you very much. If you're still there, it was a, a bit long, but I loved it. So, thank you for thank coming, you, Jordan. Thank you, Thank you very much. And till next time. Bye-bye.